Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today I wanted to explain for you how consistently low levels of the amino acid tryptophan can lead to bone loss as we grow older. On average, bone mineral density increases till about age 35. Then, at about age 50, that density begins to gradually decrease. And this age-related bone degradation is over and above the bone loss that women already experience from estrogen depletion. The inflammatory cytokines interleukin-6, interleukin-1-beta, and interferon gamma are typical hallmarks of an aging body. These three inflammatory cytokines activate a liver enzyme called indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase, and this enzyme, which I'll refer to as IDO, generates a compound called kynurenine. Kynurenine is something that induces muscle atrophy and the oxidation of fat cells. As IDO activity is increased, what little tryptophan your body does have is depleted, as IDO actually converts tryptophan into kynurenine. You can think of kynurenine then as literally oxidized tryptophan. So how does this rotten tryptophan negatively affect the bones? Kynurenine inhibits the action of osteoblasts, which typically form new bone, while increasing the bone dissolving action of osteoclasts. So for an older person consuming a less than ideal diet, which means consistently low intake of tryptophan and other cr critical amino acids like glycine, cysteine, and tyrosine, along with necessary antioxidants and a lack of physical activity, the increased kynurenine consequently leads to bone resorption, decreased bone formation, and a loss of bone mass, along with accumulation of fat in the bone marrow. And all of this makes for some very weak bones. An increase in oxidative stress as we age also contributes to the degradation of muscle tissue seen with a condition like sarcopenia. So what can we do about this? First, maintaining regular physical activity is primary, especially weight training a few times each week, as this builds bone density better than anything else. Keep your energy up with at least 100 milligrams of ubiquinol, which strengthens the heart by boosting ATP. If you don't feel any energy at 100 milligrams of ubiquinol, then increase your dose by 100 additional milligrams each day until you do. Reduce excessive inflammation through regular consumption of well-known anti-inflammatory nutrients like vitamin C, vitamin D, magnesium, and the bioflavonoid quercetin. Obviously, this also means abandoning hyperinflammatory foods like fast food and or anything processed. And also, I would consider taking both tryptophan and niacin, which is also known as vitamin B3. Niacin is produced in small amounts in the body from tryptophan, so a daily niacin supplement taken with meals to mitigate the famous niacin flush will liberate tryptophan that you're taking in through your diet, along with any supplemental tryptophan. Also, niacin is a powerful anti-inflammatory. Try to take your supplemental tryptophan away from food, so maybe an hour or so after eating. If possible, try also taking a proteolytic enzyme on an empty stomach just before going to bed. These enzymes travel throughout the bloodstream and break down countless inflammatory compounds like undigested food, cellular debris, toxins, heavy metals, and even viruses. So as you can see, maintaining regular tryptophan intake is important, but it's far from the only solution here. However, this should also show you just how damaging the grim hallmark of age-related stasis really is. Eat sufficiently to maintain your energy as you get older, and more than anything, stay active. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.